Welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 96. I am Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and today is Friday, November 3rd. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I did not make a Floss Tube last week because I was out of town, and I'll tell you a bit about that later. But I did post, as some of you noticed, a um, galloping horse video of Cindy and I, the quilting uh, side of our lives. So you could check that out. Um, even if you're not interested in quilting, you might find it fun to watch because frankly, Cindy and I had a blast. We always do. And um, I certainly enjoy watching other people <laughs> having fun. It's kind of contagious. Anyway, of course, you don't have to watch that if you're not interested in quilting and other sewing type projects. But today, Floss Tube has to do with cross stitch, of course, and Variety Show has to do with something else. And we'll find out after a while what the Variety Show is. So, cross stitch. So I was gone over the weekend and I took some cross stitch with me and I did not actually do any of it, work on it at all for any of Friday or Saturday. We were traveling up there. My friend and I went up there to drove up together, up meaning to the mountains of North Carolina. And then we had a busy afternoon Friday and then a busy day Saturday and played some games and that kind of thing. We ate at some fantastic restaurants. And uh, then Sunday was a much more calm, non-activity kind of day. So we just hung out at the house and looked at the view and uh, I worked on Matilda. Is that what I worked on? No, actually it isn't, but I took Matilda with me, so I'll show you that first. This is from the uh, Letters from Europe box, uh, Hands Across the Sea, and it is a French sampler. And it's the first one that I've done from that box. I do intend to do at least a couple more of them. And here's where I am, I'm really almost done. So this week I worked, or the past couple of weeks, I worked on this border. And across the bottom, so this one that started, there's that one, and there are th three more. So there are four more major borders, if you count that one that started, plus a little tiny one in blue, and then it will be done. And I am beginning to have a little concern about whether I'm gonna run out of blue thread, but probably it'll be okay. Anyway, I, I think that it is, so this is November 3rd. Unless I get very sidetracked, I believe I will finish that this year. That's my goal. Um, another thing I worked on, this is, this is what I worked on this is the retreat project from a little glare from uh, the Great British Sampler weekend, and this is a little sampler, A. Robson, 1897, and then this is the um, sort of memento of the retreat, the uh, mattress cushion thing, pin cushion. And I finished the stitching and I did the outlining. I'm sorry, wow, there's a, quite a crease there. Well, it says September 29th, if you can't read that. So all of the stitching is done for the cushion. So my next thing that I have to do, and I really thought I might do it this week, but I, I won't say sidetracked. I worked on some quilting, which the eagle-eyed among you who watched the video the other day may be able to detect what quilting I worked on. Um, so the next step is to put the uh, interfacing that was provided on the back of all of this and cut them out and then sew them together. And what I, I'm also going to do, so there's another, you know, there's another half of the fabric is still available. And I'm going to put this linen on the bottom. I was debating about that, but I think it'll be easier to sew it together if I'm using the linen on the bottom. I could use just a fabric. So as you can tell, I'm still a little bit debating it. 
just a regular cotton fabric. I have, I'm sure, something that would be suitable. So maybe, maybe I'll do that. I'm not sure exactly. Well, actually, you know, I have a, I have something that would be quite suitable. So maybe, maybe I'll do that. I'll just draw, I'll mark it in some way that will show the exact dimensions because one of the ways that this is going to go together nicely is by using those red outline lines to make the stitches that the whip stitches that hold it together exactly on those outline lines and that will mean it will be perfect um you know no no thinking required really just stitch it that way so that uh, definitely going to work on that maybe even this weekend but certainly soon and i don't know if i'll show it to you finished next week maybe i might so last weekend was not the third weekend of the month when I do Christmas themed stitching nativity sow. But I worked on this anyway. Um, this is Love and Joy um, by Beth Twist, Heartstring Samplery Design. And I kept working on it because I was enjoying it and I wanna finish it so that I can have it finished for Christmas. So I have a little bit more here on the side and I have the top border to finish and then love and joy come to you, go in the middle there. But just love this. This is 40 count winter brew, winter brew. And the thread is called Cheeky by Roxy Flosco. It's slightly variegated. I don't know if you can see that. And it's not a deep red. There are some, I have some deeper reds made by them, but I thought it looked nice on this tan fabric. So that has been fun. Now, if you look at my um, Instagram, you would have seen from sometime recently that I posted a, a little bit of a progress picture on Hannah Campbell, 1838. Um, I love this, love working on it. This is 36 count ballet slippers by Fox and Rabbit. And I put I began that central cartouche and put the over one letter A in. And I wanted to do another letter. I wanted to go on and keep working on the letters because it's, you know, it's not the most quick and fast and brisk and mindless stitching that one ever does to do over one. You see there's a lot of over one. But I really felt I needed to do the inner cartouche, which is not over one, in order to get a place to, uh, to anchor these over one letters, because believe me, I don't want to rip them out. They, um, it would be hard to take it out, I think. So I, ha I want to get them right the first time. So I'm going to, my next thing I do on here will be to start the inner cartouche that will be right below that A and it will, I'll put it down in this direction and I'll put B and so forth. Because I feel, you know, I didn't, I, I kind of enjoyed doing that over one, but I don't want to leave it all to the end or have only over one to do at in a big stretch, I want to be able to mix it up with the, the I'll call it the regular stitching, but um, I'm using Overa Swa, and for the over one, I'm using 103. So that is really amazing and fun. And I feel as if I should carry the border around, but I, I don't know. I think it'll be fine. It's very geometric, so it's hard to go wrong with it. I don't think I'm gonna have trouble making it meet at the end. And this is Jane Thompson. This was a um, exclusive offered through the Homespun Needlework Cross Stitch uh, Facebook group and by um, Oh yes, Scarlet House. This is right there. You all are probably shouting that at me, aren't you? By the Scarlet House. 
uh, I'm enjoying this. This time, it's not as obvious what I did. I can't remember how much of this, these inner borders I had done. I think I extended them somewhat. And I also worked more on getting that outer border, that viney part done because I want to make sure I meet, it meets up pretty soon. So I'm going to continue that. The next stitching I do on this will be to continue and hopefully meet that viney border around the corner. And then these green, these inner borders will be, they sort of frame the, so I've done those two at this section. So I've done enough to that I could start that flower section and I can start the, the words down here. So I just feel like I wanna get some places to anchor everything in. And then once that outer vine section is done, I will do more of these, these flowers, which I really like those flowers. Um, and they're very angular. They don't require, I mean, once you know which threads go where, you can just do them. They don't, they're not hard to figure out what you should be doing. So that's really, that's really excellent. So that is the cross stitch I've been doing this week. Um, I also, I did, I didn't bring it out, but I have plotted out pretty accurately, I think, where the different pages of the Jane Goodoff, Goodoff, is that her name? That little sampler book that you can make that I have the pattern to make Leslie also has it. I plotted that out, how to fit it onto a fat quarter of 32 count linen. And so my next step on that is I'm going to use a regular sewing thread and actually mark the corners of the different sections to be sure that everything fits the way I think it will. I mean, the, the math is one thing, having it fit on the actual fabric is not trivial, even if you've done the math. I want to lay it out, make sure it fits, mark where everything goes, and then I can start stitching that, which I think will be quite pleasant to stitch. Uh, this weekend is the first weekend of the month, so I will be working on um, Mighty Acorn by Blackbird Designs as the what I am continuing to do the ongoing Blackbird Design weekend stitch along, which has a hashtag, and it's down in the... Um, description field. If you have Blackbird stuff that you're working on and you want to join in and work on it the first weekend of every month, that would be fantastic. So that is sort of what's going on. This weekend will be Blackbird and continuing with these things. Yes, it is true what you've been wondering. Where are my full coverage projects? Yes. I'll tell you what's happening from a psychological standpoint. I know I need to work on Under the Roof of Blue Ionian Weather, which I enjoy working on once I'm started on it, and I'm going to love when it's finished. I also want to work on Snippet Tiger Stare, the other full coverage piece I'm working on. And I feel as if I really need to work on Under the Roof before I work on Snippet Tiger Stare. And since I haven't gotten up the self-discipline, I guess it is, to work on Under the Roof recently, I therefore haven't worked on the Tiger piece either. And what else? What else? Are, what are the other things that are my excuse? Um... Yeah, I also haven't, oddly, I have not worked on um, Sampler 193, the red design. I haven't worked on that in the past few weeks, so I haven't shown it to you today. I, I imagine I'll pull that out this week just because I enjoy it and there's football and, and such, such as that. So anyway, let's talk about the variety show. Now... I'm going to talk, I'm going to tell you what I did in August of 2017 and 
in so doing, tell you what I'm going to do in April 2024. And any of you who maybe are aware of what happened in August 2017 might be able to guess what this topic is. So I'll give you a moment to think about it. Do you have it? No? Okay, that's fine. Um, in On August 21st, 2017, was a total solar eclipse that passed close enough to me. It really passed from coast to coast on uh, in the United States. In fact, they called it the Great American Total Solar Eclipse, which I thought was kind of hubristic to call it that, but it was quite something. And um, the, the, the eclipse, was the path of totality, the closest that it passed to us, was in um, South Carolina at Roper Mountain Science Center. We went to Roper Mountain Science Center in um, Spartanburg, I think, South Carolina. I think that was it. Greenville, oh, Greenville, South Carolina, that's where it was. And we invited some friends, a lot of friends to join us. And one couple did join us, Judy and Paul joined us. And so we drove down, we drove separately. They were coming from uh, Western North Carolina, which they were actually close to the path of totality there, but they joined us at Roper Mountain Science Center. And we came from Chapel Hill. And it happened that we had a, a um, intern visiting us, an uh, intern at our church who was staying with us, who was from Switzerland, Matthias. And we said, Matthias, you're gonna come with us to the eclipse. And he said, oh, I am? <laughs> we said, yes, you will not wanna miss it. And so we got in the car at five in the morning. So the eclipse was one o'clock, I think, in the afternoon, one nineteen or something. And we knew that it would take longer than usual to get down there because South Carolina, the entire width of the state, in fact, I have this thing. Let me just see if I can angle it so you can see. Um, this is the capital of South Carolina, and this is, um, I think it might be, I'm not sure, but the, the lines indicate that the totality is visible. This is the path of totality, and you see it goes completely across the state, and right in the center is the maximum totality, or the maximum length of time of totality. So it goes right near the capital, and that is a, you know, a hole which might be Greenville. I can't remember. A friend of mine made this for me. It's, uh, you know, it was NASA published a set of patterns that you could use on your um, 3D printer. You had a 3D printer to print these. And the idea is that you can hold this up in this round hole. If you hold that up and the, the sun shines through it, you will be able to look at the ground and see the progress of the eclipse. So it's sort of a way to keep yourself safe and as a memento of where you, where you were. And of course, eclipse glasses are necessary. So we had these on. They are, I mean, you can see nothing through them except for the sun, which is kind of interesting to look at the sun on a normal day, but then you realize it's just, it's just a big ball of light is all it is. Anyway, so those were some things and we I kept the um, Eclipse Extravaganza paper that the Roper Mountain Science Center put out and they had a map of where to park and where the food trucks were gonna be and so on. So the things you need to, to see an eclipse are some way to safely look at the sun, the sun's reflection on the ground some people brought colanders, which was very, very cool because then you got lots of suns on the ground. You need eclipse glasses and you need moon pies as a snack. Now, some of you who are not from the South may not know what a moon pie is. I'm not sure I knew what a moon pie was before moving to the South. And I, I was gonna open this up, but I'm not going to. And it's... Um, you know, very crinkly. 
So a moon pie is sort of a packaged s'more because what it is, it's two graham cracker-ish cookies that are soft. They're not crispy like a graham cracker, but it's that flavor profile. And with a marshmallow filling, you can just see the marshmallow peeking through there. Marshmallow filling all enrobed in chocolate. And on the back it says microwave for an out of this world dessert. Well, we um, it says put it on high for five to 15 seconds, you know, remove from wrapper. So I think of it as a packaged s'more. Now it doesn't have peanut butter, which I happen to like on s'mores, but that's all right. Well, it was hot in August of um, 2017 in South Carolina in the full blazing sun. And so we did not have to microwave our moon pies to get uh, some sense of that soft gooey effect of them, but they're very good just eaten. And we will have moon pies. So anyway, that's what we did August 21st, 2017. So we left at five in the morning. We got to the park at around uh, 9.30 or 10 o'clock. We met our friends there and they closed the park, I think at 10.30. They had sold out all of the capacity that they were allowing, which was a really, it was a nice amount of people. The different viewing areas, no, it wasn't really crowded. You didn't feel that you were you know, elbow to elbow with everybody. There was plenty of room to walk around. There was not a lot of shade, but you could go inside the buildings where it was air conditioned somewhat. And of course, out of the sun. And we all got way more sun that day. But if we got there around 9.30 or so, they closed at the, closed the park at maybe 11 o'clock and the eclipse was taking place at 119 and um, or 121, something like that. And so as the moon began to come across the sun, there were, it was partial, you know, it was a partial eclipse before it was a total eclipse. And there were things to do. There were different, um, the local telescope club had their telescope set up so you could go and look at it through a telescope. And there were people who were describing what exactly was happening with models. You know, here's the sun, here's the moon. And this is how the shadow is moving. And uh, quite a bit of you know, local scientists who were part of the Science Center um, helping us understand what it was we were seeing. And we happened to have, among our party, Paul is quite a aficionado of the eclipse and knows a lot about it. And so he also was helping us understand what we were seeing. And then when it was the total eclipse, um, so if you, if you've been in a partial eclipse or you were near the path of totality, then you may be able to say, well, yes, I experienced the total solar eclipse of 2017. But if you were not in the path of totality, then you didn't experience it fully. And the difference between 99% total and 100% is, I'm gonna use a cliche, but it's actually true in this case. It's a difference between day and night. Because at 99%, it's dim, the light is dim, it looks different, but it's not the same as 100%. Because at 100%, to my surprise, it was dark. It was un, Believable, and you look up in the sky, you could take your eclipse glasses off when it was at the total phase, which that year where we were was about a minute and 30 seconds. And you see in the sky, you see a black spot that has a little bit of light ringing it. And it looks like, the, it looks like an eye with flaming, with flames you know, like the, the eye of Mordor or something. And it's dark, it got cooler. The night sound started. All of those things that you read about that happened in a total eclipse, they do happen. It did happen. It was quite amazing. So amazing that in April of 2024, when there is a total eclipse again that crosses North America, 
my husband and I are going with Judy and Paul, whom we went to South Carolina with in 2017. Um, and so another thought I had when I saw the, the, um, the eye in the sky, I thought, you know, the ancients who didn't know what was happening, who didn't have the astronomical knowledge to understand that the moon's shadow was being cast on the ground and it was blocking out the sun and that it would, but just by the natural course of, um, of events would move, move away and the sun would come back out. But you think about the ancients who didn't know that and how terrifying it must have been that the sun upon which they depended, and maybe they had some occult of worship connected with the sun, there was certainly a lot of sun worship, um, was gone. And it was replaced by this evil looking thing in the sky. And so the elders of the village said, we've got to appease the gods. We've got to appease the sun so it will come back. So let's run and sacrifice something or someone. And so they did, and the sun came back, it worked. So it's really um, kind of understandable why some of these odd practices related to some astronomical events would have happened because they didn't know. They didn't have the scientific knowledge to understand what was happening. And so they did something, they took an action and it worked. So of course, next time, maybe even to think of preventing a solar eclipse, they're gonna take that same action, whatever it might've been. So it's very, very interesting to think of what the ancient peoples might've experienced. So anyway, in April, April 8th, 2024, there is another total solar eclipse that's going to cross the United States. And this time it's crossing, not it's not going coast to coast, it's going from maybe the Gulf of Mexico, somewhere in Texas, crossing up through uh, maybe Massachusetts or so. So it's, and it's in April, April 8th. So August 21st, the beauty of August 21st is it's a time of low rainfall in much of the United States. So most of the path of the total solar eclipse that day was cloud free. We certainly had perfect and crystal clear skies, no clouds at all that afternoon. In April, it's a lot iffier because April is tends to be a cloudy, a rainy month. You can have beautiful sunny days in April, but it could also be cloudy. And so though we, our friend Anne, her birthday is April 8th, she said, you should come up here and we'll meet, you know, we'll meet somewhere in, I can't remember if she suggested Ohio or somewhere that the so the path of totality was crossing and we can celebrate my birthday. And I said, Anne, I would love to celebrate your birthday with you on April 8th, but not in 2024, unless you want to come with us to Texas, because that's where we're going, Byron and I. Uh, there, we have a hotel reservation. We and our friends, the Garretsons, got the last two rooms at possibly the only hotel or a hotel in Gatesville, Texas, and it's right in the path of totality. It is at the maximum, pretty much. It's right in the center, and as Judy said when she made the reservations, I think we can just go out in the parking lot and view this. We won't even have to brave the crowds and try to drive somewhere. So that is what we're going to do, and we're going to combine it with some road tripping activities on the way there and on the way back. So we'll make a sort of a vacation out of it and we'll meet them there uh, for the eclipse and we'll experience that again together as we did in 2017. And something I didn't get out because it's packed away, it's Christmas ornament, is I they gave us in 2017 a little Christmas ornament in commemoration of the eclipse, which of course we put on our tree every year. So I'll try to remember to show it to you uh, once we start, once we get our Christmas ornaments out. So anyway, that is, um, that's what's happening in April. And that is what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I do 
I mean, really, if you can get moon pies, if you live in the north and never heard of them and you like s'mores, you could give it a try. I mean, they're probably not for everyone, just like most packaged stuff is not necessarily everybody's favorite, favorite thing, but, but it's quite a good treat to have for Eclipse Day, I think. If you can get to the eclipse, I, especially if you can get to a place that is typically not rainy in April, I highly recommend it. It is different from anything else that I've ever experienced. So much so that I'm wanting to take another big trip in order to do it again. Oh, just to close the story of going down to South Carolina, after the eclipse, the park started to empty out and we waited about an hour thinking that the, even the traffic jam in the parking lot would take some time to calm down. So a trip that normally would take us about three hours and 15 minutes took us about five hours to get there and it took us eight hours to get home. And Matthias was very helpful. Um, he had his phone out and I had my phone out. We were comparing uh, which roads seemed to be less congested and so we would get off this highway and dr drive over here for a while and we get back on this other highway and uh and tr in order to try to keep moving because it was incredible i mean he laughed because we packed drinks and food and toilet paper and you know all kinds of things not sure of uh what the status would be as we were trying to drive there and back and of course he, but he agreed it was worth it. Even he, who could have said, you know, thanks, thanks for inviting me, but I think I'll, I'll stay here. But he went with us and it was, it was great. So anyway, that is everything for today. I will be back next week as usual, as far as I know. And I hope that, will I? I'm pretty sure I will. And I will say, and possibly it won't be Friday. It might be Saturday because we might be going to see our son and daughter-in-law on Friday. But if I don't put up a video on Friday, I will put up a video Saturday. So if you want to be sure that you know about when they go up, you could subscribe and hit the notification bell and that will, YouTube will alert you when you sign into YouTube you'll see a little notification that a video has gone up. And you probably know that anyway. Um, yes, but I, I will put up a video next week for sure, one way or another, one day or another. So I hope you have a great week of stitching and planning a trip or adventuring or whatever it is that this t time of year brings for you. And uh, I certainly plan to. I'll work on uh, Mighty Acorn and get back to some other of the pieces that I'm doing and have them have something to show you next week. So I look forward to that. And thanks for watching and many blessings to you, friends. <laughs>